Hello and welcome everyone to the series of conversations that we are doing with youth change makers from across countries in Asia. This is ahead of the Asia Youth Festival being hosted in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia next week by Arrow. With us today is Yuvraj Lama, who works in Nepal. He's a person with the visual disability and he works with a community of people with disability. So welcome, Yuvraj, and uh, tell us a bit about your work. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, namaste. My name is Yuvraj Lama from Nepal. Here I represent from UA and the project I accomplished uh, I accomplished with uh, partnership uh, with the Connect Nepal. So my project name is Livelihood with uh, Physical Autonomy, uh, which tries to combine the uh, sexual and reproductive health rights uh, awareness on one side and the other side uh, entrepreneurial part of uh, women with disability. Uh, yeah, in, in, in extensive, I'll elaborate uh, later. Yeah. Great. So about how many uh, people does the project reach? Yeah, recently, yet uh, the whole project hasn't been uh, completed because uh, one uh, that pickle making training that entrepreneurial part hasn't been uh, hasn't been accomplished because uh, when I started my project it has already been started uh, monsoon in Nepal so in summer in a monsoon region the pickle the packed pickle making training uh, cannot uh, be happened because uh, it would be very uh, difficult to protect them from decaying actually so. That hasn't been done yet, uh, but uh, on the other other side, uh, we did the training on awareness of sexual and reproductive health rights of persons with disability. Uh, where uh, forty five participants were participated with, uh, who were uh, male, female, and especially young people uh, were engaged there. Yes, ma'am. Excellent. So tell me a bit about how you thought of this idea and this project and how did it come into being? Yeah, yeah, actually, actually, uh, from the very beginning, I was very entrepreneurial. Uh, I had, I, I was having entrepreneurial mindset. So when I joined this uh, change makers program, uh, at that time, we were uh, given to design one project <clears throat> so at the very time i thought that uh we need, uh, in nepal uh, we need a sexual and reproductive health rights uh, very basic even in even very basic literacy to person with disability because they are not aware of that so on the other side how we could uh, sustain it for the sustainability uh, I think uh, I thought that uh, uh, there has to be the, some uh, part or some accent for sustainability. So I thought that uh, uh, we can design an entrepreneurial uh, project to sustain the projects. Yes, ma'am. So uh, the entrepreneurship involves training people to make pickles. Yeah. Women, women with this, uh, women with people, yeah, disability, especially. Yeah. Okay, so uh, they will learn how to make pickles and can sell mm -hmm. them, and therefore then earn a livelihood. Yeah, on their livelihood, then the certain person. Yeah, I have mentioned there that uh, thirty percent of uh, the profit uh, they can uh, use it for the social side, which we call it Nepal in Nepal that uh, corporate social responsibility. They can use uh, that fund for uh, reproductive health rights of persons with disability because there are many uh, gaps where uh, we have to work. So that just a uh, stable concept, but not yet uh, materialized. So I think we can go ahead because as by registering the social enterprise. Uh, yeah, that's all. Right. 
Right. So, uh, when it comes to making uh, people aware about sexual and reproductive health and rights, how do you do that? Yeah, first of all, training and workshops. Uh, what what I did also, uh, we designed a training uh, on awareness of uh, sexual and reproductive health rights of person with disability for a person with disability. So, just workshop and uh, trainings, but. Uh, also, in the community level, we have to work because in individual level, in family level, uh, we just have to work uh, for awareness. So even most of uh, Nepali women are, were, uh, were facing double marginalization, women with disability or triple marginalization they may have faced. So uh, they are very behind in this issue. So we must work, I think in individual level, in family level, or in community level. So what are some of the main challenges in your project? Mm, so challenges <clears throat> by observing this uh, project. So first then, the, in Nepal, actually, most of our uh, projects come with the, yeah, the, development partners uh, that fund. So I'm planning that uh, I'm, uh, I'll am i do a pickle making training and they will, because uh, in a sense, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not being able to really mention it, but I'll repeat it. So I, the challenges are because, uh, Mostly the NGOs and organizations work from the <clears throat> that uh, donor based for project. So if we try to make uh, or we are if we try to create capital in this uh, uh, year, they are not used to with this. So well, women with disability or persons with disability. Uh, they are dependent or they are used to with the uh, donor fund. So it is not used to with uh, them to cre create capital by ourselves. So uh, that's uh, that seemed to be one of challenge. Uh, I think, ma'am. And I, you were I, I really can, sure I when you were designing it. it, the entrepreneurship part of it was very important to you. You were really sure that you wanted it to be entrepreneurship. Yes, ma'am. But at that time, our mindset and our habit, our uh, our uh, yeah, daily sets are not designed in that way, because uh, find fundings comes from foreign countries and uh, yeah, and then government gives allowances. But that's uh, that mindset. What we what. Uh, the we can create our own capital that's uh, we cannot think the people of, with disability are not thinking in that way so that's uh, i think that that seemed to be one of the challenges ma'am right so uh, Okay, so you're saying that the srhr training goes out to people with disability men women youth but yes, the entrepreneurship part is only for the women is it yes ma'am so why is it that why not train men and youth also in some entrepreneurship skill yeah, that comes with the uh, youth with uh, youth women with the disability actually because because they are facing a kind of uh, like, i mean they face uh, vulnerability in multiple forms because uh, being a woman uh, having a disability and they they are facing, I think, double, triple marginalization in society. So uh, if we focus on them, the project, then the the upliftment or development can is for the for the equity. It's just pro okay. purpose was based on equity. Okay, so uh, if you can tell me a bit about the people who come, uh, you know, as part of the project, some of the women, just give me one or two examples who you think have really benefited from the project. 
Yeah, most of them, ma'am. Uh, so in that training, that SRHI training, the most of uh, women with disabilities were uh, very, uh, they, they were not uh, openly talking about these issues. So in the first session, they were uh, feeling shy and uh, at the very end, they also expect uh, further programs in these uh, subject matters. They also shared their uh, observations that in a Nepal's context, uh, persons with Down syndrome or intellectual disability, and they are uh, in a very childhood, they are made uh, infertile because their uh, uterus are uh, taken out in a very childhood uh, period because in, a, in adulthood, they may get a very, they think that their parents think that they may get a problem in their adulthood or unnecessary pregnancy. So their uh, reproductive rights are, are violated from the very childhood. So they shared many stories uh, regarding this, uh, regarding uh, the reproductive health in a holistic man. Yeah. So is that still happening? This thing that you're saying about violation of reproductive yeah. rights or, you know, did exactly. it happen 20 years back? Yeah, many case studies have been has been done. So, uh, in Nepal's context, there are uh, it is happening. Many case studies are coming. Uh, newspapers, uh, national dailies are publishing these newses, news, not newses. Yeah, news. So, this is problem actually. So, so projects such as yours and the work that you are doing, how can how can it uh, you know, raise awareness at a greater level and make sure that these kind of things don't happen in the future. Yeah, actually, just this is a very small initiative. Uh, uh, this is from our side, but we need uh, collaboration and partnership with the uh, uh, local go local governments, uh, federal governments, and other development partners who are working in community level and who are working in uh, <clears throat> local level. So very significantly, we need uh, um, kind of collaboration and in a, a development discourse because we have some strategies, we have some ideas, but uh, we, we may not have resources. So they may lack kind of uh, uh, methodology or ideas regarding how to work. So in, in that gap, we can collaborate, I think, then the the work can be in a large form. Right. So uh, the people with disability that the project is reaching out to, uh, what, you know, just if you can give me one or two examples of the women you think have really benefited from it or engaged very actively with the project. Just give one or two examples of the people so we can understand them a bit more, the kind of disability, their kind of life, how old are they? Just one or two examples, if you could just pick from your group and tell me about them. Yes, ma'am. And in the June 19th that program, uh, uh, we actually, uh, at the first time, in the first time in Nepal, uh, leprosy affected people, you know, right? So they are also uh, com come under uh, disability, but they were not engaged in uh, programs of persons with disabilities. So at the first time, they engaged in this program and uh, as a uh, beneficiaries because uh, <clears throat> they are expelled from the society because uh, having a, a leprosy. So they are isolated, they are kept in uh, some uh, conservation, or what to say that centers, so special centers. So yeah, we called them in program and they shared their stories. Uh, like what exactly I think is, uh, what exactly we found is uh, they shared their stories. Like I have a blank now. <laughs> I can I think we can edit it, right, ma'am? Sure. Yes, of course, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, one of uh, women from Gorkha, the she shared that uh, <clears throat> when she she got married in early age. 
she uh, got a baby she gave birth to a baby then 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 when she was affected by leprosy she was kicked out from the home so she came into the care home so at the time she faced many uh, problems right so at the uh, childhood uh, early marriage or secondly uh, the functional limitation or yeah or leprosy affection or affect impact of leprosy or uh, that due to that uh, having functional limitation so she faced uh, secondly she was compelled to kick out from the home then being in care home um, she is fighting for uh, the leprosy affected uh, ladies uh, then she was not known about this these uh, rights actually uh, reproductive health rights now she doesn't have husband uh, now even having that uh, leprosy because after having the medicines it, it stops but those some parts uh, does not work so at the very point time uh, at the very time she was not aware about uh, <clears throat> menstrual hygiene or she was not aware about uh, the overall sexuality so she was very happy uh, on regarding that ma'am right so uh, when you do these trainings do you do them yourself or do you get somebody to do the training how does it work yeah i, I yeah we had two trainers one sanjeev sreshta who are the who is the a uh, fellow of family planning association nepal another one is uh, susil kumar karki who is uh, the expert of mhm menstrual oh, health yeah excellent, susil excellent. kumar karki ji sorry skin reading so <clears throat> so uh, there are two trainers ma'am actually so the these trainings will happen for uh, women as well as men and youth yeah yeah especially young you you use the young uh, men and women with disability so it will happen i mean separately for men and women or will it happen together yeah it's together because it, together. it has to be for sometime when we need uh, if we need uh, case studies we have to do separately because we have to bring out the secret stories which cannot be told in yeah in a group right so uh, if you can just talk a bit about the kind of uh, mentorship that uh, the aro program gave you to do your project the das actually for, from the very first day uh, das was uh, motivating us to design a project but later <clears throat> when i presented my idea then later uh, aro funded with the 500 dollar seed money so it uh, actually motivated me just it was just a raw idea but uh, it compelled me to work so so some funds are left so pickles making training are uh, is going to happen by this uh, by coming uh, december because we have to uh, collect other funds as well because it is a, a bit costly so they're meant to save actually Yeah, at the up to the last session of the our change makers program, the yeah that 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 mentorship of Das Dakshina Modi's yeah that was that was very grateful. Yeah, very nice, great. Thank you for um, sharing about the work that you do. Anything else you'd like to add about the project, about how it's going, or what you see as way forward? uh no so well uh, looking forward to uh, register the social enterprise we yeah we in, in the same theme because uh, as i said earlier so in nepal's context uh, there is no provision of uh, registering the social enterprise either there is just a company registration that is uh, private limited or non profit ngo registration system so we have to we're trying to seek the midway where we can work 
from the social side also from the uh, entrepreneurial entrepreneurial side as well but legally it is not being uh, allowed but we are trying some of uh, organizations are working in a similar way but how they are registered it is not known uh, yet so we have to seek on that we have to uh, explore on that Excellent. Thank you for sharing and congratulations on uh, you know the great work that you're doing, path-breaking work that you're doing. And uh, all the best as you take it forward. Um, for Thank everyone you. listening in, um, this uh, conversation that we just had with Yuvraj Lama of Nepal uh, is part of the series of conversations we are doing with youth change makers across countries in Asia. This is ahead of the Asia Youth Festival happening in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, next week hosted by Arrow. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in knowing more about the festival, please look at the Arrow website and uh, look forward to more of these video conversations with these amazing young people uh, from uh, across countries who are doing such amazing work in their communities. Thank you, Rubraj, and uh, bye for now. Thank you so much. Thank you.